Despite its unusual taste and smell, valerian root is one of the most popular herbs of our time. Valerian root is especially amazing for both anxiety and sleep. In this episode, I'm going to share tips on how best to work with valerian root for anxiety and sleep. And I'm going to show you how to avoid valerian root side effects. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. I'm here in my garden where valerian grows abundantly. I started with one small plant many years ago and it has spread here and there, which I love. Valerian is a fun plant to grow because it's big, it's beautiful, and so many pollinators love it. I especially love watching the goldenrod spiders on it. In addition to being a common garden plant, various valerian species grow wild too. I love hiking through wild open meadows in the alpine mountains of the northeastern Cascades here in Washington State, where valerian can grow abundantly in small pockets. On a hot day, the flower's musky scent fills the air. I clearly remember the first time I came upon one of these valerian meadows, and I was absolutely overjoyed at the sight of it. Valerian root is an herb that has a long history of use around the world. The plant Valeriana officinalis was an official herb in the United States Pharmacopoeia from 1820 to 1942. However, many other native Valeriana grow around the world and are also used medicinally. If you've ever taken Valerian root or made it into various herbal brews, you're familiar with its unique scent. Some people will say it smells like ripe gym socks or animal urine. I think of it as a pleasant, earthly, musky aroma. This may sound strange to some, but it was actually used in perfumes in the 16th century. Do you have experience with valerian root? What do you think of that smell? I'd love to hear about it in the comments on YouTube or on the official podcast page, herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Your comments mean a lot to me. I love cultivating a community of kind-hearted, plant-loving folks. Plus, it's always interesting and insightful to hear the experiences of plant lovers out there. And you never know, your suggestion may also help others. Okay, grab your herbal notes and pen, let's dive in. Valerian root relaxes tension and promotes rest and relaxation, but not for everyone. Before we get to the specifics of looking at valerian root for anxiety and sleep, we have to dive into herbal energetics. An important part of herbalism is matching the herb to the person, rather than simply matching an herb to a disease pattern. I'll show you what I mean by this by using the example of a person with insomnia. Sure, if someone has insomnia, you could look up a list of herbs for insomnia and then start taking all the herbs under this general category. Sometimes that works, but more often than not, it doesn't. That's because there could be 10 different people with insomnia with 10 different underlying causes. In other words, there's rarely a one size fits all herbal solution. In addition to looking at this holistically, especially in regards to lifestyle factors, energetically minded herbalists will want to know the energetics or constitution of the individual person. Does this person with insomnia tend to feel hot or cool? Are they more damp or dry? If someone tends to run warm and dry, they are most likely going to get better results using different herbs than someone who is cold and damp. It's important to understand this when working with a valerian especially 
especially because if you give valerian to one person, it may be wonderfully calming and relaxing, but to another, it can actually be a stimulant and be really agitating. So that's right, valerian can have opposite effects for different people. These seemingly idiosyncratic reactions have been observed by herbalists for a long time. As a result, many herbalists have attempted to describe the typical valerian person in order to avoid giving it to those who have opposite reactions. Here's some of those descriptions. In 1919, eclectic herbalist Finley Ellingwood writes, its influence upon the nervous system is best obtained when the circulation of those centers is inactive and feeble, especially when there is a paleness of the face and the skin is cool. In his 1922 book, The Eclectic Materia Medica Pharmacology and Therapeutics, Dr. Harvey Wicks Felter writes, it is one of the best of calmatives for the collective condition termed nervousness. To act well, it should be given when the brain circulation is feeble and there is mental depression and despondency. More recently, herbalist Michael Moore says that valerian increases digestive circulation, cardiac circulation, and lung circulation. Therefore, if you are an adrenal cortical stress person with a strong demanding intestinal tract, good moist lungs, and the cardiovascular excess, then valerian will stimulate functions that are already excessive and leave you with both sedation and physical stimulations. Not your herb, he says. <laughs> David Winston gives his specific indications for valerian as someone who is restless and nervous with an agitated pale face and cool skin. More simply put, many Western herbalists don't recommend valerian for people with warm or excess constitutions and instead use it for those with cold or deficient constitutions. While this seems like a good general rule, I haven't seen it be so clear cut in practice. Herbalist Jeremy Ross, who practices in England, lists valerian as cooling and bitter and best used for those with heat tendencies. He does hypothesize that valerian in Britain may be different than what is found in North America. I tend to avoid recommending valerian root with those who have warm constitutions. Also, when recommending it to someone, I first ask, have you ever taken valerian root? If so, what was your experience? If they've never taken it, I recommend they start with small doses to gauge their reaction. If you're new to the concepts of herbal energetics and understanding if a person or plant is hot or cold or damp or dry, then I highly recommend my free Herbal Jumpstart course. This short video course takes you through the ins and outs of herbal energetics, and by the time you finish, you'll have increased your herbal knowledge tenfold. One person who did the Herbal Jumpstart course wrote in to say, your Herbal Jumpstart course is amazing. I love everything about it from the beautiful presentation that just draws you into the course and into the fresh appreciation and delight in herbs to it being clear and simple yet giving a deep understanding of the nature of herbs and herbal medicine. I did a certification in herbal medicine years ago but didn't cover anything like the concepts you've talked about in this course. Thank you so much, L. Norell. This course is entirely free to everyone who joins my herbal newsletter community, but just because it's free doesn't mean it's not worthwhile. I recently had someone write in to me wondering if they forgot to pay for the course because it was so in depth, they couldn't believe it was free. I kid you not, Brenda wrote, I have no idea how I gained access to this particular bit of your love. However, I'm thrilled, all caps. I think I owe you money though, the Herbal Jumpstart course has seven heavenly lessons and various downloads. Wow, let me know if I somehow missed the checkout. If you're ready to jumpstart your herbal learning, then look for the link to sign up in the video description or on the official podcast page, herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Valerian root has many gifts, but it's most well known for its sedating and relaxing properties. It's long been used for people with anxiety, nervousness, restlessness, and insomnia. Researchers have studied valerian sedative qualities extensively. It's been repeatedly shown to be effective even when compared with pharmaceutical drugs. 
In one study, researchers concluded that valerian was just as effective as oxazepam, a benzodiazepine, when taken over a six-week period. Another study compared the use of a three-herb formula containing valerian, passionflower, and hops to the sedative zolpidem. The researchers concluded that the herbal formula is a safe and effective short-term alternative to zolpidem for primary insomnia. Another interesting study reported that people taking valerian root reported significantly better sleep quality than those taking a placebo after benzodiazepine withdrawal. A 2021 study showed that patients who took 530 milligrams of valerian root following coronary artery bypass graft surgery slept better than those taking a placebo. Several studies have shown valerian's ability to promote sleep in menopausal women. It's also been shown to be effective for helping nervous and agitated children, as well as children who have difficulty with sleep. However, I do want to note that valerian isn't recommended for children under three. Three studies have been done to evaluate how valerian might influence reaction time, alertness, concentration, psychomotor effects, and next day sedation. All three studies show that there was no negative impact. However, I know from being in clinical practice and working with lots of folks that slight grogginess after taking valerian isn't unheard of. So when trying valerian for the first time, it's a good idea to take it slow, evaluate your individual reaction. It's also a good idea to take it on a night when you don't have to wake up early or have a lot of responsibilities the following day. Valerian roots relaxing effects decrease muscle tension and as a result, relieve pain related to that tension. Consider using valerian for menstrual cramps, muscle cramps, restless legs, and neck and shoulder tension. However, if these issues are chronic, also consider magnesium deficiency as a possible root cause of these issues. One study set out to evaluate valerian's effectiveness for people diagnosed with restless leg syndrome. The study concluded that the use of 800 milligrams of valerian for eight weeks improves symptoms of restless leg syndrome and decreases daytime sleepiness. Valerian has clinically been shown to decrease pain associated with menstrual cramps. In a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial, 100 female students were randomly assigned to receive either valerian or a placebo. Those taking the valerian reported that their pain was significantly reduced in comparison to those taking the placebo. The researchers concluded valerian seems to be an effective treatment for dysmenorrhea, probably because of its antispasmodic effects. One of my favorite ways to work with valerian root is for spasmodic coughing. I don't often see this mentioned elsewhere, but valerian powerfully calms repetitive, spasmodic coughs. I use it frequently for those end of illness dry coughs that tickle your throat as soon as you lay down and then result in that lung wrenching, spasmodic coughing. It not only calms the coughing reflex, but can also promote sleep. While most famously used for anxiety, restlessness, muscle pain, and insomnia, valerian can also correct stagnant digestion. Dr. Harvey Wicks, an eclectic herbalist from the early 20th century says, owing to its volatile oil, it is a good carminative in flatulence with nervous unrest and relieves the disagreeable sense of fullness felt after a meal by causing a rifting of gas. More simply put, herbalist Michael Moore says that Valerian stimulates digestive functions. There are many species of valerian. For this section, I'll focus on Valeriana officinalis, which is native to Europe and Asia and grows commonly in North America. Valerian is an herbaceous perennial that grows one to eight feet tall. It prefers lots of sunlight, in damp soils and will readily reseed in the garden or in wild meadows. 
The compound leaves grow opposite along the stem. There are also basal leaves at the foot of the plant. The flowers are most often white, although some species have a little bit of pink, which I love because I fervently believe that pink is the best color in the world. The flowers grow on umbels on long hollow stalks. Each flower has five petals. The spindly roots are creamy white to yellow. They are ideally harvested for medicinal use in their third year when the essential oils are at their peak. If you harvest the roots of a really old plant, you'll find that the roots are quite woody and they don't have that characteristic strong musky scent. Valerian is powerfully relaxing. It brings deep restful sleep and relieves muscle tension, but only to those who are well suited to this very particular plant. Valerian is generally regarded as safe. However, as I shared earlier, some people have a negative or opposite stimulating reaction to valerian. These effects don't last more than say 12 hours or so, but if you experience agitation rather than relaxation after taking valerian, then you'll want to avoid this plant in the future. Instead, you could look to other herbs like lemon balm or skullcap, which are cooling relaxant herbs. Reported adverse effects to valerian are rare, but can include diarrhea, headache, and gastrointestinal disturbance. It's not recommended to take valerian or other sedative herbs while also taking barbiturate drugs as their effects could be amplified. In regards to pregnancy and breastfeeding, the Botanical Safety Handbook writes, animal studies and human case reports have indicated no adverse effects of relatively high dosages of valerian in pregnancy. However, the safety of valerian during lactation has not been conclusively established. Another way to avoid valerian root side effects is to stick with fresh root tinctures. Herbalist Michael Moore wrote that the continued use of dried root preparations may cause emotional agitation in some individuals. Lastly, as with most herbs, it's a good idea to start with low amounts to see your initial reaction and then increase slowly until your desired results are found. Preferred dosages vary widely with valerian root. If you'd like a free ebook all about valerian root, then visit the link in the video description. Also in the video description, I've included other helpful links like where you can buy valerian root as well as both of my books. If you've enjoyed this video on the health benefits of valerian root and you value trusted herbal information, then I hope you stick around. The best way to get started is to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can be the first to get my best herbal insights and recipes. Here's your valerian fun fact. Valerian roots have a very strong smell. Either you love it or you hate it, but it's hard to be neutral about it. And humans aren't the only ones. Cats and rats alike are stimulated by the smell with a reaction reminiscent of catnip-induced furies. One time I brought in a bag of fresh valerian root and when I turned my back, the cat had jumped on it and went a bit berserk. But just like humans, valerian doesn't have that effect on all cats. Another interesting tidbit about Valerian is tied to the medieval Pied Piper story. The story goes that Pied Piper led an infestation of rats out of Hamelin, Germany by playing his trusty flute. In some variations, he also had Valerian root in his pocket.